Good evening, and welcome to Dr. Peace Theater. My name is Dr. Dennis Business, and tonight we will continue our dive into the first of the short stories contained within the pages of the Bachman books. Rage. When we last left Charlie, we were in room 16, Miss Underwood's algebra class, and he had begun to get it on. And now he continues. Chapter 18. Sylvia Reagan finally broke the silence. She threw back her head and laughed long, hard and loud. Several people, including me, jumped. Ted Jones didn't. He was still on his own trip. You know what I'd like to do after this is over? She asked. What? Pigpen said. He looked surprised that he had spoken up again. Sandra Cross was looking at me gravely. She had her ankles crossed, the way pretty girls do when they want to foil the boys who want to look up their dresses. I'd like to get this in a detective magazine. 60 Minutes of Terror with the Placerville Maniac. I'd get somebody who writes good to do it. Joe McKennedy or Phil Franks. Or maybe you, Charlie. How's that bite your banana? She guffawed, and Pigpen joined in tentatively. I think he was fascinated by Sylvia's fearlessness. Or maybe it was only her blatant sexuality. She sure didn't have her ankles crossed. Out on the lawn, two more trooper cars had arrived. The firemen were leaving. The fire alarm had cut out a few minutes ago. Abruptly, Mr. Grace disengaged himself from the crowd and started towards the main doors. A light breeze flapped at the bottom of his sport coat. More company, Corky Harold said. I got up, went over to the intercom, and switched it back onto talk, listen. Then I sat down again, sweating a little. Mr. Don, God give us grace, was on his way, and he was no lightweight. A few seconds later, there was that hollow chink, which means the line is open. Mr. Grace said, Charlie? His voice was very calm, very rich, very certain. How are you, Skinner? I asked. Fine, thanks, Charlie. How are you? I'm keeping my thumb on it, I said agreeably. Snickers from all the boys. Charlie, we've talked about getting you help before this. Now you've committed a pretty antisocial act, wouldn't you agree? By whose standards? By society's standards, Charlie. First Mr. Carlson and now this. Will you let us help you? I almost asked him if my co-students weren't a part of society, because no one down here seemed too worked up about Miss Underwood. But I couldn't do that. It would have transgressed a set of rules that I was just beginning to grasp. How does I do it? I bawled. I already told that damn Mr. Demba how sorry I is for hitting that little girl with that Lucyville slugger. All it wants, my poor page shrunk. All it wants, my soul saved and made white as snow. How does I do it, Reverend? Pat's Fitzgerald, who was nearly black as the ace of spades, laughed and shook his head. Charlie, Charlie, Mr. Grace said as if very sad. Only you can save your soul now. I didn't like that. I stopped shouting and put my hand on the pistol as if for courage. I didn't like it at all. He had a way of slipping it to you. I'd seen him a lot since I bopped Mr. Carlson with the pipe wrench. He could really slip it in. Mr. Grace? What, Charlie? Did Tom tell the police what I said? Don't you mean Mr. Denver? Whatever. Did he? Yes. He relayed your message. 
Have they figured out how they're going to handle me yet? I don't know, Charlie. I'm more interested in knowing if you've figured out how you're going to handle yourself. Oh, he was slipping it to me, all right. Just like he kept slipping it to me after Mr. Carlson. But then I had to go see him. Now I could turn him off any time I wanted to. Except I couldn't. And he knew I couldn't. It was too normal to be consistent. And I was being watched by my peerless peers. They were evaluating me. Sweating a little. I asked the intercom. Are you? You guys. I said. An edge of bitterness creeping into my voice. You're all the same. We are? If so, then we all want to help you. He was going to be a much tougher nut to strip than old Tom Denver had been. That was obvious. I called Don Grace up in my mind. Short, dapper little fuck. Bald on top, big mutton chop sideburns, as if to make up for it. He favored tweed coats with suede patches on the elbows. A pipe always stuffed with something that came from Copenhagen and smelled like cow shit. A man with a head full of sharp, prying instruments. A mind fucker, a head stud. That's what a shrink is for, my friends and neighbors. Their job is to fuck the mentally disturbed and make them pregnant with sanity. It's a bull's job, and they go to school to learn how. And all their courses are a variation on a theme. Slipping it to the psychos for fun and profit. Mostly profit. And if you find yourself someday lying on that great analyst's couch where so many have lain before you, I'd ask you to remember one thing. When you get sanity by stud, the child always looks like the father. And they have a very high suicide rate. But they get you lonely and ready to cry. They get you ready to toss it all over if they will just promise to go away for a while. What do we have? What do we really have? Minds like terrified fat men begging the eyes that look up in the bus terminal or the restaurant and threaten to meet ours to look back down uninterested we lie awake and picture ourselves in white hats of varying shapes there's no maidenhead too high to withstand the seasoned dork of modern psychiatry but maybe that was okay maybe now they would play my game all these shysters and whores let us help you, Charlie, Mr. Grace was saying. But by letting you help me, I would be helping you, I said as if the idea had just occurred to me. Don't want to do that. Why, Charlie? Mr. Grace? Yes, Charlie. The next time you ask me a question, I'm going to kill someone down here. I could hear Mr. Grace suck wind as if someone had just told him his son had been in a car crash. It was a very unself-confident sound. It just made me feel very good. Everyone in the room was looking at me tightly. Ted Jones raised his head slowly, as if he had just awakened. I could see the familiar hating darkness cloud his eyes. Anne Lasky's eyes were round and frightened. Sylvia Reagan's fingers were doing a slow and dreamy ballet as they rummaged in her purse for another cigarette. And Sandra Cross was looking at me gravely. Gravely. As if I was a doctor or a priest. Mr. Grace began to speak. Watch it! I said sharply. Before you say anything, be careful. You aren't playing your game any longer. Understand that. You're playing mine. Statements only. Be very careful. Can you be very careful? He didn't say anything about my game metaphor at all. That was when I began to believe I had him. Charlie. Was that almost a plea? Very good. Do you think you'll be able to keep your job after this, Mr. Grace? Charlie, for God's sake, ever so much better. Let them go, Charlie. Please save yourself. You're talking too fast. 
pretty soon a question will pop out. That'll be the end for somebody. Charlie, how is your military obligation fulfilled? What? What? Sudden whistling of breath as he cut that off. You almost killed somebody, I said. Careful, Don. I can call you Don, can't I? Sure. Weigh those words, Don. I was reaching out for him. I was going to break him. In that second, it seemed like maybe I could break them all. I think I'd better sign off for the moment, Charlie. If you go before I say you can, I will shoot somebody. What you're going to do is sit there and answer my questions. The first sweaty desperation. As well concealed as underarm perspiration at the junior prom. I really mustn't, Charlie. I can't take the responsibility for... Responsibility? I, I screamed. My God, you've been taking the responsibility ever since they let you loose from college. Now you want to cop out the first time your bare ass is showing? But I'm in the driver's seat, and by God, you'll pull the cart. Or I'll do what I just said. Do you dig it? Do you understand me? I won't play a cheap parlor game with human lives for party favors, Charlie. Congratulations to you, I said. You just described modern psychiatry. That ought to be the textbook definition, Don. Now let me tell you, you'll take a piss out the window if I tell you to, and God help you if I catch you in a lie. That will get somebody killed too. Ready to bear your soul, Don? Are you on your mark? He drew in his breath raggedly. He wanted to ask if I really meant it, but he was afraid I might answer with the gun instead of my mouth. He wanted to reach out quick and shut off the intercom. But he knew he would hear the echo of a shot in the empty building, rolling around in the corridor behind him like a bowling alley, like a bowling ball up a long alley from hell. All right, I said. I unbuttoned my shirt cuffs. Out on the lawn, the cops and Mr. Denver were standing around restlessly, waiting for the return of their Tweety Bull stud. Read my dreams, Sigmund. Squirt them with the sperm of symbols and make them grow. Show me how we're different from, say, rabid dogs or old tigers full of bad blood. Show me the man hiding behind my wet dreams. They had every reason to be confident, although they did not look confident. In the symbolic sense, Mr. Grace was Pathfinder of the Western world. Bull stud with a compass. Natty Bumpo was breathing raggedly from the little latticed box over my head. I wondered if he'd read any good rapid eye movements lately. I wondered what his own would look like when night finally came. All right, Don. Let's get it on. Chapter 19. How was your military obligation fulfilled in the army charlie this isn't going to accomplish anything in what capacity as a doctor a psychiatrist no how long have you been a practicing psychiatrist five years have you eaten your wife out why terrified angry pause I don't know the meaning of the phrase. Well, I'll rephrase it then. Have you ever engaged in oral genital practices with your wife? I won't answer that. You have no right. I have all the rights, and you have none. Answer, or I'll shoot someone. And remember, if you lie and I catch you in a lie, I'll shoot someone. Have you ever engaged in... No. How long have you been a practicing psychiatrist? Five years. Why? What? Well, because it fulfills me as a person. Has your wife ever had an affair with another man? No. Another woman? How do you know? She loves me. 
Has your wife ever given you a blowjob, Don? I don't know what you... You know goddamn well what I mean. No, Charlie, I... Ever cheat on an exam in college? Pause. Absolutely not. On a quiz? No. I pounced. Then how can you say your wife has never engaged in oral genital sex practices with you? I... I never... Charlie, where did you do your basic training? F Fort Benning. What year? I don't remember. Give me a year or I'm going to shoot somebody down here. 1956. Were you a grunt? I... I don't... Were you a grunt? Were you a dog face? I was... I was an officer, a first lieutenant. I didn't ask you for that, I screamed. Charlie, Charlie, for God's sake, calm down. What year was your military obligation fulfilled? 1960. You owe your country six years. You're lying. I'm going to shoot. No, he cried. National Guard. I was in the guard. What was your mother's maiden name? G Gavin. Why? What? I don't know what you... Why was her maiden name Gavin? Because her father's name was Gavin. Charlie, I... In what year did you do your basic training? 1956. You're lying. Caught you, didn't I, Don? No, I... I... You started to say 57. I was mixed up. I'm going to shoot somebody. In the guts, I think. Yes. Charlie, for Jesus' sake, don't let it happen again. You were a grunt, right, in the army? Yes. No, I was an officer. What was your father's middle name? Ch it was John. Ch Charlie, get a hold of yourself. Don't, don't. Ever gobbled your wife, my man? No. You're lying. You said you didn't know what that meant. You explained it to me. He was breathing in fast little grunts. Let me go, Charlie. Let me go. What is your religious denomination? Methodist. In the choir? No. Did you go to Sunday school? Yes. What are the first three words in the Bible? Pause. In the beginning. First line of the 23rd Psalm. The, um, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And you first ate your wife in 1956. Yes, no. Charlie, let me alone. Basic training. What year? 1956. You said 57 before. I screamed, here it goes. I'm going to blow someone's head off right now. I said 56, you bastard screaming out of breath hysterical what happened to jonah don he was swallowed by a whale the bible says big fish don is that what you meant yeah big big fish of course it was pitifully eager who built the ark noah did where did you do your basic fort benning more confident familiar ground he was letting himself be lulled. Ever eaten your wife? No. What? No. What's the last book in the Bible, Don? Revelations. Actually, it's just Revelation. No S, right? Right. Sure, sure. Who wrote it? John. What was your father's middle name? John. Ever get a revelation from your father, Don? A strange, high, cackling laugh from Don Grace. Some of the kids blinked uneasily at the sound of that laugh. Uh, no, Charlie. I can't say that I ever did. What was your mother's maiden name? Gavin. Is Christ numbered among the martyrs? Y yes. He was too Methodist to really be sure. How was he martyred? By the cross, crucified. What did Christ ask God on the cross? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Don, 
Yes, Charlie. What did you just say? I said, my God, my God, why? Oh, no, Charlie, that's not fair. You asked a question. You tricked me. You just killed someone, Don. Sorry. No! I fired the pistol into the floor. The whole class, which had been listening with taut hypnotic attention, flinched. Several people screamed. Pigpen fainted again, and he struck the floor with a satisfying meat thump. I don't know if the intercom picked it up, but it really didn't matter. Mr. Grace was crying, sobbing like a baby. <laughs> satisfactory, I said to no one in particular. Very satisfactory. Things seemed to be progressing nicely. I let him sob for the better part of a minute. The cops had started towards the school at the sound of the shot, but Tom, Tom Denver, still betting on his shrink, held them back. And so that was all right. Mr. Gray sounded like a very small child, helpless and hopeless. I had made him fuck himself with his own big tool, like one of those weird experiences you read about in the penthouse forum. I had taken off his witch doctor's mask and made him human, but I didn't hold it against him. To err is only human, but it's divine. To forgive. I believe that sincerely. Mr. Grace, I said finally. I'm going outside now, he said. And then with tearful rebelliousness. And you can't stop me. That's all right, I said tenderly. The game's over, Mr. Grace. We weren't playing for keepsies this time. No one is dead down here. I shot into the floor, breathing silence, then tiredly. How can I believe you, Charlie? Because there would have been a stampede. Instead of saying that, I pointed. Ted? This is Ted Jones, Mr. Grace, Ted said mechanically. Yes, Ted. He shot into the floor, Ted said in a robot voice. Everyone is all right. Then he grinned and began to speak again. I pointed the pistol at him, and he shut his mouth with a snap. Thank you, Ted. Thank you, my boy. Mr. Grace began to sob again. After what seemed like a long, long time, he shut the intercom off. A long time after that, he came into view on the lawn again, walking towards the enclave of cops on the lawn walking in his tweed coat with the suede elbow patches, bald head gleaming, cheeks gleaming. He was walking slowly, like an old man. It was amazing how much I liked seeing him walk like that. That was chapters 18 and 19 of Rage, the first short story from the pages of the Bachman books. Charlie's madness is increasing, it would seem. He made that grown man cry over the intercom. And I have the feeling he won't be the last. But we will find that out next time. Because this has been Dr. Peace Theater. And my name is Dr. Dennis Business. And as always, my friend.